Assalamu alaikum guys, this is uh, Ali Bakir Khan again with uh, another session of Youth Alumni Association. Uh, today we have Ghazia Ahmed here and she used to be our brand ambassador for Youth Alumni Association. Uh, and she's here for explaining her career journey. First of all, Ghazia, thank you so much for joining in. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm good, Alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm good as well, Alhamdulillah. All right, so you've been through a lot of stuff. We guys started back in 2017. And I still remember you used to post different quotes on a daily basis. And now I see you in third year of MBBS. So that's, that's quite a journey, uh, I believe. And you also told me that you're working as a teacher at a child care center, right? Yes. So can you go ahead and explain a little bit about who Ghazia is, how you start off your career, and currently, you know, things that you're facing, do you face any hurdles? Just go ahead and explain on the topic that's regarding career counseling to the youth of the okay. world out there thank you so i think um right now obviously i'm still studying still student full-time and everything but i think over here yeah big there's a big concept of um working part-time as well as alongside your education in so canada that's why i was right? like you know what I, you should I didn't mention in canada. okay yeah so i think it's so important to just gain experience even if it's not a, it doesn't have to be about gaining money or anything so my big mindset was alongside education I should gain experience in whatever field it doesn't have to be in medical it doesn't have to be in a specific field but I really thought that gaining experience was a fundamental thing not only career-wise but also just you know in our daily lives I think it was very important so I set out to go into teaching and I applied in various categories and obviously it's really competitive here like in Yatake um, when you set yourself out in the world, in the career world, you'll be able to definitely find something. So I thought of going to teaching. And then... Yeah, I mean, that's that's a part of, you know, the answer to my question. But I want you to go back to who Ghazia was when I met you since you were little. You had different goals. You wanted to pursue mm -hmm. different fields of, you know, studying. So was it parental pressure that you had to choose MBBS or was it your own choice? And be very honest about it. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely my own choice. Um, obviously, parents go hotel, like they want you to become a specific person, doctor, engineer, lawyer. Yeah. It was their preference. Like in, alongside it was me as well. Like I really wanted to. My main goal was to help people. And I think okay. the best way to do that is to go in a doctorate. And so I liked really like if people were in need of something, if people wanted help in something, if they were sick, if they just needed assistance, I think um, doctor would have been like the best option. So I was like, I had some goals in mind, you know, like assisting, you know, um, helping, aiding people. Um, it doesn't have to be like, if they're just sick, it can just be like, they need a hand in something, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, these were just a few things that were in my mind alongside my parents. We pressured like that, but it was just that, um, they had certain recommendations and, uh, and then so they never forced you there. to just be someone you always chose your own journey and you had that confidence in yourself that okay this is what I am supposed to be and even if I'm going to help out people it does not matter mm -hmm. what the focus or my area is or what is the industry that I'm going to go ahead and pursue so now exactly. you know because in Pakistan I mean the reason you know Pakistan is because your parents are from Pakistan actually so talking about your whole, you know, studying era, I mean, if you talk about uh, your high school degree and stuff, so you've been studying in Canada, is that correct? Yeah. So how can you compare? I mean, I'm not sure if you know exactly about the studying system in Pakistan, but being a student, do you think that there is something that uh, Canadians are doing that's positive and that can help us as Pakistanis as well uh, to help maintaining career counseling? If yes, then tell me what it is. And if you think there is something that's lacking in Canada as well, you can actually throw some light upon that because we are trying to expand this thing globally. I mean, it's not like, mm -hmm. because I had a word with uh, a colleague of mine, Catherine, and she told me that even in US, there are certain people who need career counseling. So it's not just in mm -hmm. Pakistan. So can you throw some light upon that as well? Yeah. So um, I've had a little experience with Dubai and Pakistan, most in Canada, okay. but like seeing my cousin study, seeing other brothers, sisters study, mm -hmm. I could see that there were a few things lacking in both perspectives in Canada and Pakistan as well. Mm -hmm. In Pakistan, I thought that the, sort of the teaching method was different. Mm -hmm. I think students are more um, derived to memorize than learn, than gain knowledge. I think mm -hmm. it's more about memorization. 
from teachers um, side, I think they're more pressured not to just learn, not to gain knowledge, not to like experience, but mostly just to see what they're writing, memorize it for a few seconds, and then they're good to go. So yeah. I think that is a factor that maybe needs to be changed. Same with um, Dubai as well. I thought that it was like that. And then in terms of even funding, like I think over here in Canada, till high school, you're like, it's free education, right? For all students yeah. um, countrywide. I think that can be a factor that can play in Pakistan and Dubai as well. I mean, that is another um, thing. Uh, if you're talking about funding, obviously we've got different institutes, mm-hmm. tier one, tier two, and tier three as well. My focus of today's discussion is more like, you know, explain me something that uh, involves your core interest and uh, what are those ways based on which you think that you are prepared to be a doctor or prepared to be a certain engineer or let's for example a chartered accountant or go into mm-hmm. accounting or HR or business studies uh, right. was there a journey or was there any workshop that you particularly attended or anything like mm-hmm. that that actually you know made uh, or created an insight in your mind that okay I'm fit for medical was there any mm-hmm. part of your career in which that occurred or not? Yeah. So during university right now, there were a bunch of clubs and webinars that would go on and discussions and conferences with different professors. Okay. Um, they would always talk about um, the fact that like you shouldn't be forced into going into anything. You should obviously you have your own mindset. But yeah. alongside that, you need to have confidence, first and foremost, in what you're doing. You yeah. need to have patience, right? You need to have a strong um, mindset, right? I think these are all core principles because when it, whichever career you're going into, it's important that you are, you know, firm in what you believe in, what you're going into. You can't just decide to wake up one day, find something hard, and then just give up the next day, right? You yeah. need to have that sort of um, patience that, you know, it'll be better the next day, or I'll try harder, or I'll try a different method. So I think these were all like things that were, that would compile and they would, definitely talk about that and that would put yourself into thinking you know like oh maybe I should do this in a different yeah it seems like there's a internet yeah I think these are all principles that would um benefit okay perfect yeah uh seems like there was some lag in the connection anyways it was it's a pretty good discussion that's going on uh Ghazia can you throw some light on you know entrepreneurship because this is something that i am actually focused on and how did you choose that this is good for me for example going for mbbs is actually Mm -hmm. going to be the right option because there are millions of opportunities there are millions of industries out there there are numerous subjects or fields where a child can actually go but Mm -hmm. i mean it's glad to know that you're one of those people who wanted to become a doctor and you're in that industry but how did you choose that because that's the most tough decision at that point of time you know, to decide whether what is the career field that you're supposed to pursue. So can you answer that, please? Mm-hmm, definitely. So I think um, it is a huge puzzled concept to think about, you know, what career should I take? Because obviously this is for life, right? Yeah. Um, you're going to take it with you forever. So I was in a bit of a puzzled mindset. I would talk to professors. I would go into different groups, discussions. Um, even talking with your peers itself helps a lot. So I think... Um, what made me go into doctor it was not that like teaching or other fields were not like less than seen as less than it was just because I really wanted to go into something medically oriented um okay. you know working with different equipments working with patients um if, even if it's just laboratory work you know it was specific stuff that were designed specifically for doctorate mm-hmm. um it does not mean that teaching wasn't it was seen as less than I love teaching as well I'm working I'm in, literally going to teaching just because of the fact that I still get to work with different peers, different associates, different children, right? I'm working with really small, they're all toddlers, they're all preschoolers and they're all infants, right? So it's still lovely to um, coordinate with them and you know learn so much about them. Um, again, this is not only career-wise, but also worldly-wise, you get to learn a lot. So I think that was the main thing. Um, I wouldn't say uh, like just go into specific thing. You can obviously change around. You don't have to simply follow through all your life with one field. If you like something else, go into something else. But um, it was just the fact that doctor was more medically oriented. That's why I was going into that specifically. That's that's a really good answer that you just gave. So what you're trying to say here is that even if you're pursuing medical, it does not mean that 
you're supposed to just follow it throughout your whole career, even though exactly. that's going to be the major part of your career, because that's going to be your primary focus, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is going to be your bread and butter. And this is going to be something that you're going to get into. But the side hustle should never stop. Because if you exactly. want to, if you want to produce entrepreneurs, if you want to produce a mindset that has research and development, you need to explore different other aspects of life as well, instead of mm -hmm. just making sure, I mean, even in the field that you are in right now, uh, there are a lot, there is a lot of research and development that's happening. So for example, COVID hit the whole world badly, and there was no vaccine at that time, right? So mm -hmm. if people are going to think beyond, only then we, we would be able to create entrepreneurs in our society. For example, I really like the approach that you're teaching. I also like to teach in my free time. I teach a child and not just one child I've been teaching before as well. Why I do this is because I want to help out people and I want to make sure that they have a different mindset. So I hope that, you know, that Youth Alumni Association is focusing uh, to just, you know, expand uh, their network. And one more thing that we are focused is on that we should uh, uh, actually, you know, spread awareness regarding lack of career counseling. And it's not just for Pakistan, it's in Canada, it's in America as well. There are people who can afford, then there are people who cannot afford. There are people who've got good parents who are educated enough, then there are people who have money, but their parents are not educated enough. So we need to establish Center for Career Counseling and Leaderships in every Definitely. institute. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Was there any kind of a, a proper uh, center for career counseling and leadership in your school in UAE or in Canada or wherever <coughs> sorry for that you've been was there anything like that there were a few but I definitely think it needs to improve worldwide yeah. it doesn't have to be in a country specifically in Canada itself though it's really well established I definitely think there could be more accessibilities for students um, in terms of career counseling you know I still feel like despite all like the the help we get like psychologically or just um, career wise, I definitely think that students are still very confused on what to do. Yeah. They're not getting as much help, despite there being a lot of availabilities. I just think they're very confused or very puzzled on what to do. They have a lot of pressure. And I feel like these sort of career counseling webinars are just um, centers itself definitely help in you know, guiding students on where to go. Um, what to take. As well. For example, the idea that I personally have, this is also an innovative idea. I mean, nobody's actually, if you talk about out of 10, I think there might be just one or two people doing and the same thing. I mean, going for podcasts in this specific area. Uh, I believe that if we start doing it, uh, if we introduce, uh, you know, career as a subject itself, for example, a lot of people, they go into MBBS, but they don't even know what that means. And that's a I mean, that's being so lame, I guess. I mean, there's no other mm -hmm. word that I have. So if you don't even know what you're pursuing, every word has a certain origin, right? That it comes from. And people are more, I think we're just following a pattern in which we're involved in a race and we just want to go with the flow. We just want to be outstanding. We just want to take the first position. And these are our goals. I mean, I just want to make a new house. I just want to get a new car. Apart from that, there should be some different things. I mean, talking about people like Bill Gates, uh, all those uh, like Steve Jobs, why they were good and what they were because they had different strategies. And if you've started business, I don't know if you have or not, but a business student would know that there comes a point in your business life cycle where you have to go for innovation. So similarly, if you're talking about your education, take it, you know, it's really precious. You've got life I mean, you know, you just live once and in that one life, if you're just copying and if you don't have that uniqueness in yourself, there's no point of, you know, just pursuing a career for no goddamn reason. Excuse mm -hmm. my language, but, but the point here is that I'm trying to, uh, you know, emphasize on the fact that we need to create those leaders and we need to come out uh, uh, with certain potential. We need to introduce bachelors in entrepreneurship, let's, for example, in which people are just going to different fields and thinking about ideas, ideas, ideas. As they say in a quote that the number one category is of people who are actually good at uh, ideas, who speak about ideas, right? And speaking about China itself, I mean, you know that it has a very good economy these days. And why is, I mean, if you're using a phone, for example, even this phone that I have right now, it, it's written out there that, you know, uh, Apple or whatever, but made in China. The shirt that you wear, mm -hmm. that's made in China. So China has developed a certain marketing strategy, a certain uh, consumer behavior they've got into that. They researched about it. So 
you as a doctor in future since you told me that you know you can help out people how would you be able to help out people in a certain way where you think you can also create an impact uh in society not just for canada or pakistan or uae but for the mm-hmm. entire world around for africans for those who need you the most do you have any idea mm-hmm. in your mind i think um again this doesn't have to be only for doctors or anything it can be for anyone working for non-funded organizations or even just making your own again it goes back to entrepreneurship yeah starting your own entre- or non-funded organization um for example unicef it definitely works with a bunch of different countries and stuff that work in medically aiding um those are that are in need of help but don't have the proper resources yeah um uh like as you said africa or other third world countries you know that really really need help um i think going into that would be really beneficial and again again i think that humans itself we have really complex mindsets that we can go into anything it doesn't have to be like um towards a specific uh, uh field again but i think we all can make such different innovations together yeah. as a whole and we can definitely go into anything like it doesn't have to be like towards engineering or anything it can literally start with paper pencil you know you can just start creating ideas brainstorming what you want to do to help. sit exactly. down together think about exactly things. it starts from scratch all these bill gates steve jobs as you mentioned they all started yeah. from scratch yeah. they started from the bottom right it can be you and me creating a big impact in the world so i think it's just a matter of just sitting down thinking of what you want to do to help the world right it can Makes be volunteering sense. it can be just attending different internships or se- seminars and we need more of these people because unfortunately this thing is lacking because everybody's thinking of their own career i mean i do understand that you know it's better to protect your own feet instead of carpeting the whole earth but it does mm-hmm. not mean that you don't have a responsibility that's known as social responsibility because uh, i don't know i mean whatever the, your religion is in the end eventually humanity comes first as you know mm-hmm. michael jackson once said i have quoted this a lot of time but i'll also let you know that heal the world make it a better place for you and for me and for the entire human race so mm-hmm. that's what his focus was about i mean that we need to come up as humans we need to come up with humanity first and this way it's not just going to help people in choosing the right careers for them for themselves but it's going to spread more peace it's going to spread less racism and all those issues that we are also facing because we guys need to connect at that level so i have another question gazia mm-hmm. and that is for example you are given uh, you know a sort of authority in a canadian government right i mean for example the prime minister now mm-hmm. being a prime minister for a week what are you going to do what steps are you going to take immediately to make sure that this problem is resolved and what would be those three strategies or two strategies or anything that you can name and think as that mindset that you are the prime minister of canada let's for example mm-hmm. yeah okay um in terms of career counseling right like career counseling like, yeah mo- b- b- specifically yeah. yeah career counseling and entrepreneurship these two things mm-hmm. yeah. okay so first of all i would make accessibility or availability for students way more um like frequent and often Mm-hmm. um in a sense that i would allow for a lot of students to gain more experience than just go into like applying into different work fields mm-hmm. first i would want them to gain a lot of experience um this would be th- done through like um volunteering it can be done through shadowing it can be done through learning through um different professionals um attending a lot of different groups um seminars clubs and stuff because i feel like sometimes um even like within doctor itself getting into internships has been so less because of the amount of people that are going into it so it's way less accessible it's only for people that are top notch you know getting 90s and stuff yeah. i think that's not fair i think everyone should get the chance not only just to go into a different field but also just attend a group you know go into internships volunteering and stuff so i think that itself needs to be changed it needs to be way more accessible for students um that's one i think yeah Yeah. I think um a way more organizations need to be um held um not by professionals though by students itself by like our, people our age you know the young generation I think they need to step up as leaders now because yeah. I feel like we have a lot to learn from our younger peers. Um we usually think you know that oh go, going 
to someone older than you will be way more beneficial. But nowadays, our young peers actually have a lot to say, but I feel like they don't have a voice. Um, and so I, I feel like having them be the leaders or even just, you know, step up into like a leader position, help them out, obviously, don't just leave them alone. But obviously assisting um, them into becoming leaders of today would yeah. benefit a lot. And this would be through um, organizing different um, centers, different groups and stuff, you know, having them speak out what they have to say. I feel like that definitely helps not only just career wise, but just, you know, to gain experience. Um, that would be one. And then secondly, or thirdly, I would maybe have mm -hmm. different teaching methods set out. So this would mean like um, our leaders or our professionals would have day-to-day -day basis um, groups that would teach students about, you know, what goals um, they have, what mindset do they have, what do they want to go into. I feel like this is not emphasized upon. That's why everyone's really confused on what to do because, yeah, we have groups now here and then online, you know, in live. But yeah. I feel like really connecting one-on-one -on -one with our younger peers would be really beneficial, you know, getting to know what they want specifically. And I mean, like, individually, you know, like, not just one person with a group, but maybe one-on-one yeah. -on -one we have, because we have a lot of leaders, we have a lot of professionals that are able to help, you know? I feel like get, like setting out time to help us at our age would definitely help um, in just gaining experience and what we need to do in the future. So see, this was a brainstorming exercise. I asked this question almost in every podcast that I do. And mm -hmm. I have a list of those ideas that I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. Point one, talk about it the first step is you have to say that you can second step i mean you you might have studied the scientific experiment right in which it starts all with the observation then there's a hypothesis and then there's a theory and law and stuff like that right so uh, mm -hmm. i don't know if you know a famous band of pakistan Janoon ali azmat i don't know if you know mm -hmm. have you ever heard of him or not I have not. Okay, you, you haven't. But let me just go ahead and phrase a song that the guys were singing at a concert. And that was actually Zamane ke andaz badle gaye. I don't know if you can get the meaning out of it. Yeah. Then there was one statement that quoted ke jawano ko peeron ka ustad kar, which means the youth should be, the, you know, actually teaching the mentors. It does not have, it does not have to be like that, obviously, but just you, you, you spoke about the fact that we do rely on elders, but we should also give chance to the younger peers to just go ahead and come up and, you know, just explain what they think, because it's going to mm -hmm. be their era that's going to come, you know, and they should know what they're capable of. If they're not going to be confident enough, it's not going to happen. Then Iqbal once quoted, Khudi ko kar buland itna, what do you get out of it? I mean, do you, do you get the meaning or should I explain you? Guys? Definitely, definitely. No, no, I understand. Yeah. So, uska matlab basically ye hai ki, just fly to an extent where God is asking you yourself, what do you want, my child? Or what do you want, you know? So, we should be reading things. We should be reading all those good people. Iqbal uh, has a certain vision. It, he had a certain vision due to which we had Pakistan. In Canada, there might be history. If you talk about US, there was Martin King Luther, uh, Luther Jr., you know. And mm -hmm. then there are uh, Nel Nel Nelson Mandela. I'm pretty sure you might have heard about him. Think about those entrepreneurs, those people who've changed the world, who, who know how, uh, you know, how important that was to actually go ahead and come up with change. And I think now mm -hmm. we've come to that point of, our lives in which we need to go ahead and do that because my heart inside craves for people out there who are actually studying into a tier two institutes and they don't have enough resources, but they've got good hearts. They've got enough passion. They just don't want to go ahead and become a doctor. But what's mm -hmm. happening in Pakistan is that, for example, a person spending five years in MBBS after a while just thinks that he or she is not fit for that degree and he should actually go for bureaucracy, which should not happen. There, I mean, this should be eliminated. Why? Because there is a lot of merit in Pakistan. I don't know in Canada what's the situation and how do you guys go ahead. But here in mm -hmm. Pakistan, people are fighting like anything. There is a lot of talent that we guys have. So, Ghazi, it was really nice talking to you. Do you have any questions that you want to ask me directly or do you have anything to add on being the brand ambassador? 
of youth alumni um, association? No, no questions, but I would just like to end off by saying, like telling our peers, whoever's listening, whoever wants to know more, that literally take a step, you know, don't be scared in whatever you're going into, whatever you want to go into. If you think it's less than, if you think it's more than, I think the first thing is to just take a step forward, you know, get to know the world, get to know your field. Um, ask around, don't just stay within your bubble, get out of your bubble and ask around people, see what they have to say. I think that it really makes an impact. You know, d d just don't, don't just like attend webinars and webinars. Yeah, these are really beneficial, but also like, Go outside and see the world, see what they have to see, and then speak out. I think these are really bad. Exploring yourself, yeah. exploring, knowing your inner capabilities, and don't hesitate. I mean, if exactly. you think if you think that, and you need a mentor, it does mm -hmm. not matter if uh, he or she is, you know, I mean, obviously, it should be an elder person in a way that obviously he or she has much more experience. They could be your parents. They could mm -hmm. be anyone. But if you're going to start speaking up, only then we're going to, you know, go ahead and resolve these kind of issues. And once we know mm -hmm. what our core interest is, we would be, you know, uh, devoting our mind, you know, 200% into all that stuff. And mm -hmm. once we are doing anything with full interest, for example, this is something uh, that I'm actually interested in. And that's the reason I'm doing it, right? You, you're willing to help out people. Now, let's, for example, mm -hmm. I give you a chance that, okay, Ghazia, there is a project. You're going to get your, uh, you know, remuneration for that as well. So would you like to go ahead in a matter of second years? You're going to go like, yes. Why? Because that's your interest. Mm -hmm. So I'll end up by just uh, letting all those institutes. I mean, for example, all those people who are listening, first of all, youth don't rely, always create your own opportunities. These are podcasts that we guys are doing just to help you guys out, but you need to set your own goal yourself. Me, Ghazia, the president of uh, Pakistan or Canada, prime minister of Canada, they are not going to go ahead and come to your own house to actually tell you that, okay, this is what you are made for. But you are the one who can, I mean, you've got social media. You've got every other source that people did not have when they were our age, talking about my parents. They had to write down letters. They had to send those letters via posts, you know, couriers and stuff. And it used to be a long process. They had to wait for that. So mm -hmm. we have everything just, you know, in a jiffy, we can just go ahead and search. So try to utilize social media in a productive way. And I think this would be the only solution uh, to make sure that we guys are uh, eliminating this problem. And to the government, uh, I would recommend that they should come up with more strategies. And obviously, you know, the plan that I have for uh, Center for Career Counseling and Leadership, it should be there. Because at any point of time, if a person thinks that he or she needs career counseling, there should be a coach who has a certain exposure of different industries, just mm -hmm. to make sure that the child or the student, you know, leads toward or lands towards the area that he or she is a fit for. So that's pretty much it, guys. You guys can follow us on Facebook. We have a channel, Youth Alumni Association. We are trying to expand because of limited availability of time that I have. I don't get enough time to actually work on a lot of it, but slowly and gradually, I'm trying to just, you know, take some time out. Uh, Ghazia, thank you so much for uh, being a part of the session. My and, pleasure. And I think that's pretty much it. If you would like to add on anything, that's on you. No, that's okay. Thank you so much. It was wonderful talking about this. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Take care of yourself and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, bye.